Okay. Today I have a. Uh, I kind of stumbled across a little uh, booklet that I've had for years. Uh, it's made by Red Devil Glass Cutter or the Red Devil Company. Uh, this is for demonstration purposes. I am not trying to sell this, replicate it. I will give credit to the Red Devil Company in the links below. Um, basically, I just want to show this. This is a nice old book. Uh, I don't know if it's printed. 1952. Look at some of the old diagrams. It's kind of neat. Uh, basically, it was a how-to guide to use a glass cutter back in the day. Um, everything's pretty much the same today. Uh, the modern glass cutters out there, there are changes, but um, for the most part, they're using a you know hand cutter. This is another one I had laying around. You know the the, the pile of old tools that uh, accumulate it's a, it used to come like this uh, you know for selling purposes they also came in uh, plastic tubes with a screw cap that was kind of neat I have some old you know, glazing points these are uh, used to, Called push points. They used to anchor uh, windows into wood frames and follow it up with uh, a putty, you know, glazing compound, and uh, that's how they were set. And there were other ways with aluminum frames. They had sash clips. They're they're spring loaded. I, I can show you those too, but. but Right now, we're, gonna, we're just going to go over this book. This is really, really neat. I'll try to zoom in. Uh, watch an expert cut glass. It looks easy enough. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> One sweeping motion with the Red Devil glass cutter. Twist of the wrist. And presto. Here's how to cut glass like an expert. I, I love... Um, you know the old, you know the old ways they advertise. Everything was <laughs> with a, uh, you know, humorous type of, uh, you know, I don't know. They they put a lot of humor in it. They, they, presto, here you go, there you go. All right, page one. Wipe glass clean with clean rag. Get rid of all dirt or film which prevents the glass cutter from making a uniform cut. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah, you cut on dirt and dust, it's not going gonna to be as good. Uh, let's see. Page 2. Remove sticker from new glass and clean. Rest glass on even layers of newspaper or a layer of felt. And they use uh, felt or newspaper. That just kind of keeps the glass from getting scratched, holds it in place. Uh, as far as the sticker, and it, that's a no-brainer. You, you can rub it with a little bit of mineral spirits, and it softens it up. But yeah, you get it off. I like that old scraper too, huh? Look at that. Our studio used a, uh, a low pile carpeting, uh, like a Berber, uh, you know, for, for doing repetitive or, or glass work. We didn't want uh, a wood top, wood table top, the, the little glass shards would, uh, if you move the glass over the shard, you end up scratching it. Uh, the carpeting kind of not prevents it 100%, well, but will eliminate it substantially. That's why they, they say newspaper. What's that? <laughs> or, 
a layer of felt. Hmm. Okay. Page three. Actually, no. Number three. Page four. Lubricate the wheel of your Red Devil glass cutter using any household oil, such as three in one. Well, you got that. We got that. such as three and one. This supplies oil to cutter wheel and reduces friction between glass and edge of wheel. Um, I, did, I actually learned this yesterday that I did a lot of research on what's going on, the science behind how glass scores, and though it was something you know, it, it was always there. I just never knew what was going on until I looked into the science of it. Uh, yeah, they, they were right on it with, to reduce the friction. Actually, uh, scientists claim scoring the glass creates friction and uh, a little bit of heat. That uh, There's a terminology used uh, that causes uh, glass to score and separate at the score. I apologize, I don't recall the name of it, you know, the terminology, it's very scientific, but basically it's saying that when the glass is scored, you know, a lot of things are happening, you're, you're separating molecules, you're heating up the glass, you know, the surface, the you know, glass when it, when it, its solid state has a uh, you know, skimming effect, you could say, uh, so when you score it, you're breaking those molecules on the top consistently, you know, to actually uh, the score is creating that, that, that cut or that crevice in the glass which allows you to break it when you, when you apply pressure to it at the score. Uh, a lot more science to it than that, but for the most part that's what's going on. Uh, the when you do score your glass uh, without oil, you'll see uh, the glass starts chipping, you know, chipping up. That's that's that tension uh, I speak of. That you're breaking that tension, and the friction between yeah, you're breaking that tension uh, that enables you to score the glass or break the glass. Right, so for all you science people out there, that's what's going on. That's why you uh, say, well, glass cutters aren't sharp. And what actually is going on? Well, that's what's going on. You, you're uh, changing the molecular stru uh, structure of the surface of the glass enough to make it score. And uh, though dry cutting. Uh, it does work. Putting oil reduces the friction. Not so much, you know, the wheel spinning, but it keeps that friction level down, so you don't end up with uh, undesired cut. You know, going off. I, I refer to that a lot of times as a spider floor from tapping. That's why I don't recommend tapping under a score because you, what you're doing is you're creating more of this separation along the score that can <coughs> excuse me that can end up as breaks you know while applying heat to the, to the you know the glass area by soldering or actually a flexing of the glass in elements of the wind or just moving the panel, moving around. The tapping on glass it should, should be a very limited thing and only used to aid in starting a score, not to continuously score along, you know, not to continuously tap along the score to get, get it done. Uh, too many times, and I could show examples of people that tap along every you know every inch of the score 
they feel great you know hey I got this cut look at me uh, party time yeah but you know what I'm not saying it's gonna happen chances are good that where you're tapping you're gonna have failure All right, so don't tap just just tap to get a run started or assist in a score don't rely on it All right. yeah, I, I could write this book uh, but they're gonna they're gonna talk about tapping page four not me I, I didn't get it from this book somewhere they mentioned something about the ball uh, number page number five number four use a wood yardstick as a straight cutting guide dampen side of yardstick to hold the glass without slipping now that that actually makes sense because it uh little bit more you know it's like a adhesive property of the wood against glass I could see that but if you use a, a well-made cutting square that will hold the, the straight edge in place that will work just as well um, you know wetting the stick I understand it but um, yeah I mean they did it I mean that's fine I'm not gonna argue with it but it it's kind of like a an odd an odd thing to point out that you dampen the side of the yardstick but yeah well it works what they did mention use a wood wood yardstick they didn't say use a metal yardstick and the reason being wood will allow the cutter head to glide effortlessly along allowing the score to be a, a smooth even consistent score without stop, uh, stopping or skipping you know metal rules they end up the, the side of the glass cutter binds on the metal you know it, it does a little stop and go thing skip 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 I mean you could use them but get yourself you know you don't have to get a metal a metal uh, I'm sorry a wooden straight edge get one of those uh, modern day plastic ones where the cutter glides easily I, mean, I, I can't stress that enough that's very important you think well you know the wheels gonna no what's happening is that you you glide along you glide along your straight edge if that's metal it'll have a a, a tugging effect because metal on metal binds every time you stop that wheel every time it stops you're creating an issue with that consistent score that is required to do you know successful cuts and you'll still cut it with the stop and go thing it'll still but you, your chance having the glass break off wing off you, you just use a good cutting square made of plastic the new modern materials or wood stay, you know stay away from the metal I've, I've explained it on other videos it, the metal rule with the cork backing it, it's a rule you know if you want to do a quick cut something quick, I mean you know but don't don't rely on it as a good edging to, to score off of. It's just not good. Anyone to suggest that it's the way you cut straight edges? No. And here's, I can explain it. I got reasoning. Well, they don't tell you to go into detail as much as I do, but they do mention use wood. All right, next. Enough of that. Was that page six okay hold red double glass cutter correctly uh, what they're pointing out here I'm gonna have to say if you're gonna show how to hold it make sure your cutter is at the right angle the reason why I say that if you look closely along the bottom this wheel and this part of the grows browser on the cutter it's it's too perpendicular what's going to happen is 
I'll use a, a pointer. I don't want to mar this. So this is pencil. The, this part of the grouser will end up making contact with the glass. So, Red Devil, you know, you get it right. I know you don't want to go back to 1952 and make changes in your book, but you know, if you're going to show something how to hold the cu cutter, make sure you're showing it in a proper angle. This is too steep of an angle. If you must cut with a angle like this, flip the cutter off. It'll allow you to do more of a dip. You know, th this this is a common problem. When people first learn to cut, they they run this part of the cutter, whether it be a standard ha hand cutter or a pencil cutter. This area of the cutter makes contact with the glass and it's lifting the wheel off. So, bad red devil, bad. But as far as holding the cutter, this is a very traditional way, showing between the index finger and the middle finger. Uh, a lot of people had success with this, especially with long drawers on plate glass or, you know, just drawing long, long scores. Um, I don't cut this way. I go back one finger to get a better grip on things. It's just something that's been passed down in my family. Uh, but this, this is a traditional way. But you want to make sure the cut is more like that. Okay? All right. It says hold red double glass cutter correctly right ways between the first and second fingers and the thumb. On the underside of the handle, do not squeeze too hard. Oh, well, okay. I don't know what that means, but don't, don't squeeze too hard. I guess with your thumb? Hmm. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, that would it would kind of cause discomfort in your finger, but I think the thumb is, what they're saying is that the thumb is more or less just a guide and the, the combination of the three fingers is giving you the, you know, giving you what you need. All right, so number five, interesting. Number six, gently but firmly press cutter to glass, holding upright. See now here they got it right. See how the cutter is more, cutter is almost perpendicular, just just off 90, probably uh, 93, which that's a good angle. Uh, gently but firmly press cutter to glass, holding upright. Start about an eighth of an inch from edge, farthest from you. Okay, if cutter is held at an angle, it will not cut properly, and a poor cut. Well, they're, they're talking about the angle being, you know, I'll get another cutter here. They're, they're talking about this angle, instead of being, let's see, straight up, they're talking about this angle. You want the, the wheel to be as most most perpendicular as you can. Yeah, I'll go like that. You want the wheel to be perpendicular. I got the cutter upside down to show it. Alright, but you want to you don't want that. Avoid that. It will still cut, but it's not gonna cut as good. I mean it, it Actually, it may not cut, but you know, if you go too far, but it, if you're a little off, it'll still cut. But you want to really practice on getting that wheel perfectly straight up and down, right, straight up and down. Uh, the way Red Devil shows to cut it, I'm gonna have to say 
All right, we're going to disagree a little bit, Red Devil, because when you hold the cutter like this, in between the index and the middle finger, though you can get the cutter to stand up straight, you have less control over this because the two fingers are not as good and I'll, I'll point it out as taking the cutter in between these two fingers instead of this and taking this finger you know just a gentle wrap around it's more of a secure you know you can see that it's already stiffening up the side by side which will prevent that rocking thumb finger so when you do cut like I'm not in a cutting position you can hold it up straight perpendicular and as well control this better reason being you got it like this that, that that can go off. It, it, it works, but you're not going to have as much side-by-side -side control or sturdiness as if you go with the third like that. So, I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with Red Devil and that, but I'm, I'm just showing them a better way. Uh, th this is a technique my grandfather taught my father, my brothers, and uh, it's the way they cut glass. I can't say for sure, a hundred percent, that that's how they did it during Tiffany times, you know, in the studio. Um, but I would pretty much guarantee that that's where it came from, because it, you know, you know, and seeing Tiffany glass the way. A lot of it's cut with no power tools other than a glass cutter and a carborundum stone. Maybe a, a, a diamond file, Tiffany. I'm sure they used other methods to uh, beyond the grouser of a plier of the of the cutter that chips away deep inside curves. You can literally uh, make a horseshoe with just just the grouser. Just using these grouses, you can literally start on the edge of a piece of glass and chip yourself all the way into a deep horseshoe. If you can, if you can understand that, you can also understand that. You know, Tiffany did very delicate. Oh, I got something here. Cheap promotion time. You got delicate you know, inside curves, uh, you know, you make the score, but the, the grouser helps remove relief cuts, we call them, the little areas you, you, you cut inside. Um, here with this, this, say this pattern right here, with a grouser, I can actually make it go all the way a lot deeper. Um, that's what Tiffany did. They did a lot of chipping, you know, the, you know, the guys in the studio, they, they call them chompers, chompers. Yeah, you, you, I call them grouses, but, yeah, you know, you're wearing out your chompers, you're chomping too much. That, that was, was eventually, the teeth would start getting curved out from overuse, as well as the side of the cutter here, well, in this case it would be here, from, you know, running it against the glass. Oops, sorry. Because after we cut, we just take that, you know, any kind of little chips and little shards that can cut you. Simple. That enough will remove anything really loose you know, the real fine shards that end up in your finger. And if you cut glass, I see with any kind of texture, ripples and what have you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, 
that being said, this part of the cutter along the shank, somebody's been cutting for, some, for a period of time, you'll see that the, uh, th this shank, it's almost pathetic, the wheel falls out, it gets so bad. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're like, ah, I don't want to get rid of my cutter, it cuts so great. Well, and then a lot of times, we'll take the wheel out, the cutter's all worn out, everything's gone. But the wheel works so good, we'll remove that bearing, you can see it, the little metal pin in there, yeah, see that, we, we kind of use a, I use a, a, those uh, metal push pins, put it right on top, give it a tap, on, on a soft wood that bearing comes right out, you, you can push it halfway down, you know, halfway down, just so the wheel falls out, and, or, you know, take in a new cutter, take the bearing, push it halfway out, put the old wheel in, tap it in, and give it a little tap because there's like a little to, to hold this bearing in place. It the older cutters they use uh, brass, those bearings are brass and solid, they're solid brass. So if you give a little peening on the end, it, it spreads that bearing, keeping it tight inside the cutter. And that's a little tidbit that I, I have never brought up before, but, uh, you know, being I'm on the subject, the old brass bearings were superior, hands down, to all the, the modern day tubular type bearings, you'll see, and they, they didn't, they're still being used I believe, but uh, the tubular type bearings become, uh, you know, rough, they, 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 they cause the cutter to skip a little bit, and they don't run as smooth, you, you want the bearing, you want this bearing to really spin nicely, it, it's important, especially when there's, there's pressure applied to the wheel. So a good bearing made of brass and, you know, good cutting, carbide cutting wheel, it, that just aids to the success of cutting. Uh, the, the modern day Toyo cutters and sh uh, silver schnitties thing, they all have the modern day uh, bearings, with, not modern day, they have uh, brass or, uh, and at some times I've, I've seen uh, the, uh, what is that metal, the, not tungsten, uh, maybe it was a, a stronger metal, it, it, nearly impossible to cut, but they used them. You know, you take my word for it, my brother Glenn has got those bearings, had used them successfully by modifying his cutter. You know, when you cut a lot of glass, these minor modifications make a lot, you know, they aid to the success of cutting glass. So anyway, look back to the book. Always make a straight, even, and continuous stroke along the whole surface and off the very edge of the glass. Practice cutting on scrap glass to perfect your feel for cl glass cutting. That's a great, well written. Uh, the the part of uh, off the very edge. There's a lot of truth to that. There's, you know these places say no 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 don't run off that no the opposite is true. When you cut it correctly, and your cutter has the the ability to go off the edge of the glass without whacking the the shank of the cutter to the edge of the glass, that will be detrimental to the cutting of the glass, you want it to go off the edge because what that does, it creates that that little edging, the little from the wheel to the edge of the glass which really does aid in uh, breaking your glass, you know, snapping your score. Alright, so there's a lot, I mean, all the little details and cutting, a lot of it matters. You know, so uh, you hear these have truths, bad advice, poor advice. 
there's a lot more to cutting than just taking a, a glass cutter and running it over glass. Alright? Alright, this one, this, this is going to be a good one. Right, to break glass, hold firmly on the opposite sides of cut line. Okay? You like a, you want to like a, put your knuckles, your index finger knuckles to the score and you bend down with your thumbs. That, that's the best way to snap a glass other than using running pliers. Right, and then give a quick bending motion away from the cut. Keep fingers and thumbs close to cut. Be careful. Be careful. Hold firmly. Always break right away. Right after cutting. So cut does not get cold. Cut does not get cold. What they mean by cold is that chipping that happens after a score. And if you don't use oil, you'll see that chipping. It seems like it won't stop. It's like potato chips jumping. It's like if you ever made glue chip glass, you'll see that chipping. And they, they refer to it as cold, as in, yeah, they're, they're talking like uh, blacksmiths. You know, you strike when it's hot. You know, you score, break it. You know, you, it starts getting cold. You know, the cold cut, it, you know, they don't have to explain it. They're, they're saying, just break it right away. You don't allow, even with uh, oil in the score, there will be some slight chipping, uh, but not nothing compared to a dry cut. That's why I highly uh, discourage. I, I, it's, it don't cut without oil. I mean, how can I let's say it a million times? Even in 1952, they got it. All right, so I apologize if anyone's upset. I would, you got to use it all. I mean, you have to use a lot. Little dab will do you. Use a, you, I use mineral spirits. I put two or three drops of three and one in it just to keep it, you know, it's almost like psychological. The oil's going to help lubricate. <coughs> I mean, it does, but it, it's like the mineral spirits alone or kerosene you know has enough oily properties in it that help with the scoring and the lubrication of the wheel kerosene is not advisable a hundred percent if you're going to do painted work with, with glass because the kerosene will actually cause a thing called ditchification which it's like a rainbowing effect on the glass it's not good for you know you paint the you know, the face of Christ just to find that you got ditchification. Uh, use mineral spirits. Mineral spirits will not do that. Uh, I think, I'm not saying for sure paint thinners, but I would not use paint thinners. It's, uh, it's caustic. It's not good for your health. And, uh, you know, it dries up too much. We used to use it a lot back in the day. That should paint the whole line of a of a, a a section we broke off the sheet. We paint the whole thing with paint in this and just go. The reason why we use paint in it is was mostly for one purpose. By the time it got to the glass, the foilers, the foil your your lamp, the paint in is evaporate. The paint in is would evaporate within minutes or you know within like 20 minutes. Uh, if you put a, a coating on a piece of glass, it, it evaporates. Mineral spirits takes a, a lot longer. It might take a day or two. So you don't want the oil on the, the glass. I'll show you with the, gl the glueless foil. I mean, if it's hard enough trying to foil without glue, the little bit of oil on there makes it worse. Uh, which, on the subject of oil on glass, and you know for purposes of not using oil another one was uh, uh, the reason why people say that you must get you must grind glass to get foil to stick and that's a myth uh, but the reason why they and this is my assumption is that when you cut glass with these oil fed cutters you're going to leave a trace of oil 
along that glass that by grinding your glass you're actually cleaning up that edge and removing that that oil so hey look at that my my uh, foil sticks better when I grind it well it's not the grinding of the glass it's not the glass it's the fact you're getting that oil off it all right sorry to bust your bubble but grinding does not make the foil stick better it, it might have a slight it may, I mean yeah, it's very slight and a little bit more of a grip it's not gonna you know you don't have to grind your glass to get the foil stick it's one of my my myths my 10 bad advice things all right page 10 this shows how hesitation during cutting stroke leaves uneven spot uneven spot causes break to curve from straight line and even for a positive cutting stroke avoids this result okay um, well they kind of the, the grammar is a little off hey it's 1952 um, <coughs> yeah there's a whole lot, lot of truth to it you want a nice uh, nice stroke, nice even consistent score with pre the even even pressure. You don't want any skipping, stopping, twisting, binding, and it, you you follow all the proper rules of a a good straight edge, a firm grip, and cutting cutting in a draw technique. Here they're showing a strip. You, you're going to have consistent pressure, and you're going to end up being able to break your glass off without having that trailing effect as shown in this picture. You know, it's happened to all of us. And uh, the reason why it happens, there are a few. Uh, one of the big ones is those metal straight edges, the metal rules that we use for cutting. Another one is just not using a proper pressure. Uh, if you push, if you push a glass cutter in straight lines, the reason if you're gonna, uh, if you can understand the, and I spoke about the kinetic pressure of pulling, the, the glass cutter is at such an angle, you get a better score because of you're allowing the kinetic pressure to aid in that score. By pushing, it's like running down with bit, no shocks in your, in, in your car. It's gonna bounce, skip, jump. So we, that's why if you ever notice pulling a cutter, even those pencil grips, uh, the, uh, the Toyos, uh, pistol grip. You say, wow, I, I pull the cutter, I get a better score. I always, scores, I always get better breaks. Well, it's not because it's a straight line. It's because you're using a better kinetic balance of your cutting wheel to the glass to your arm to your hand. It's all of that. So I, I discuss more on that uh, in another video, but that's what's going on. So the bottom line is, th they're right. You want to have, see, hesitation. Hesitation. So if you're scoring, you stop, or you, you, you're binding along your metal roll, uh, that's going to cause that. I mean, besides the metal roll, metal roll having a mind of its own and twisting on you. Yeah. So, yeah, Red Devil, you got that one. I mean, they're, they're right. They're a lot of the, eh. All right, number 10. Oh, here you go. This is where, uh, I mean, though this is a half truth, th this is showing that, all right, I'll read it. Red Devil cutters have slots, all right, which are best used for breaking off narrow strips. Well, Red Devil, I'm going to say, yeah, you're right, it helps if you need to break off narrow strips, but um, maybe that's half true because the narrow strips I speak of are the relief cuts on you know, inside curves on glass. You can use them to relief, you know, take off narrow strips. Actually, uh, they work. that works better than uh, glass breaking pliers. So, yeah, if you need to cut up a little strip or something just a little too big or what, 
you could use it, but that's that's not gonna say our best use for breaking off narrow strips. Yeah, if you want to break off narrow strips, these are the best. This is the best way to go about it. But let's put the cart before the horse, may we? Uh, grousing, the grousing slots are best for glass grousing. Even Red Devil got it half right. So, but you know, we're not going to beat him up on that. Yeah, if, if you got a narrow strip you want to cut off and you can't grab it with your fingers or a pair of pliers, use the grouser, apply downward pressure, it'll snap off. Maybe not in one piece, but you know, that's not the sole purpose of these slots. Okay, the grousing tool part of the glass cutter has a lot more uh, things you can do with. Okay. Hold glass in one hand, cutter it with the other, a firm movement will separate glass at cut. Tapping underside of glass immediately after making cut may make glass separate more easily. Now they didn't tell you to tap along the whole thing. Uh, somebody told them, hey, you, you may want to just say, start your score with a good tap on the end. That'll, that'll start that score. Uh, tapping along the way, as I mentioned, it's uh, more harm than good. Tap when necessary. You know. So yeah, but, you know the, it it it's it's a good guide. Right. And then they go page twelve. They're showing. Let's see. Because glass cutters differ in thickness and hardness. It is important to have the right red devil glass cutter to do the job on a given piece of glass. Okay. For example, the red nut devil number C888 carbide. The red devil, the numbers always start with C for carbide. You, you know that. Or end with a C. We used to have one, a 10247C or 1028-5C. Those are the two top cutters we use. I'm not reading it up. That burned in my brain. I got 1024-7C, which is seven. Seven is the size of the wheel. 1028-5C. They also made a 1024-5C, but the 1028-5C had a smaller wheel. I guess that's five millimeter over seven or a centimeter, what have you. But the five made a little bit nicer. Uh, you could get a nicer score in tighter places. Uh, the only problem with a, a 5C cutter, you couldn't use it as you could a 7C cutter that would allow the, you to pass along the vinyl templates we use. If you used uh, craft paper or a cardstock, the 5C was tall enough that you could do it. I found that the 7C did everything the 5C could do except one thing, cut better. 5C was a better cutter, you know, the overall. It, it, you, you, you did some nice scores and uh, you got in places where the 7C couldn't, couldn't go. So, uh, but I stuck with my 7C for the most part because it was overall a good carbide cutter and it cleared the vinyl without worrying about binding you know the, the side of the cutter and going up in here you know right to the where the wheel extends past the cutter shank that little clearance in a 5c you would have less clearance a 7c which this is you have the clearance of the vinyl. So there are differences between the two. Uh, they both carbide. They both the the honing angle uh, is slightly different. You know that that yeah. There are times when you you don't want such a sharp cutter, especially on white opalescent glass. And what we have done, we've taken brand new. This is the way I used, I remember them. 
They came in plastic tubes with a screw cap. It's like a brand new cutter. And they, they're calling this one a 888. But I remember it as being the 1024-7C. Actually set it on the side. You take it out, brand new cutter, dip it in a little bit of mineral spirits, and run it over a, a sharpening stone about eight to ten times. Not hard, just enough to slightly dull in that carbide uh, wheel. That out of the package was very sharp. You didn't have to do that, but that really helped a lot with, uh, with some of the very dense opal whites and specifically this type of glass we got from Vietnam back in the 60s that no matter what you did this stuff had a mind of its own it was probably poorly annealed uh, but the trick was to use a duller cutter and maybe not as you know you don't have to press much harder but a little bit more pressure with a, a, a dull and down cutter slightly dull and down you can use an old cutter problem is cutters get old the cutter wears out before the wheel does the, the, the carbide wheel will last a very long time so um, they're just showing a few they got a this is called a turret turret yeah turret head this this here will give you different options of you know one for a thicker quarter inch glass one for a, a sharper honing for like three sixteenths where you use very little pressure that's for single strength glass used in picture frames uh, double strength glass typically eighth inch in regular windows and for most applications you could use another I, I don't know I think there's is it four in there? Uh, yeah. I, I never never had to use a turret but they made them let's see what else we got we got all purpose yeah, the o, O24. That all-purpose, that's probably where they, they started getting that 1024 number from. Basically, that's going to tell you the honing angle. Uh, all-purpose is a steel wheel. It, it, it'll be fine for softer float glass. You know, regular window glass, uh, it's softer than stained glass. So a steel wheel cutter will actually last a lot longer on float glass, which doesn't dull the cutter wheel down as quick as if you said, say you used a steel wheel cutter on stained glass. It's going to wear it out, you know, a lot quicker. All right, what else we got here? Oh, the ball knob and for tapping. You know, also, you put the ball end under the edge of a long run on quarter-inch glass on the, between the glass and the tabletop, which is typically a, a short pile carpet. And you just give it a, you know, drop it down right on that score and give it a little nudge from top. That, that ball will be your, you know, your, your pivot point. You can also pull the glass off the edge of the bench a little bit. I'm talking six foot pieces of quarter inch uh, plate glass. You take it off the edge of the bench a little bit and uh, it will a little tap right at the end of the score. You know, about a half inch from the edge of the glass. That'll, you'll see it, the score will start. And that's the main purpose of a tapping ball. It's not it's not designed to go tap 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 you know I see people tap 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 no I've actually seen one guy I swear this is honest to God truth he claims and this is no you know it's not a hobbyist which is even more remarkable he claims that you have to tap in a rhythm like you can't go too slow. Can't go. It's got to be in a rhythm, and he swore to it. So you know what? 
I wouldn't do it. And if the rhythm works, I mean, I, I won't even know because I don't think tapping is the right. You should you shouldn't tap. So if you clear, you need to tap, but you gotta tap in a rhythm. I gotta say, oh, tap to the 60s or the 50s. Oh, that you gotta do. A, is that a modern day tap? I mean, come on, guy. And, and people, they, they they hear that stuff. They're like, wow, I gotta go. I gotta get me some of those. Those things you go, you know, what do they call them? That you put on a piano, it keeps the rhythm. So I know the right tapping rhythm. I, I you know, I, I, I saw that, and honestly, I've never done it. But I tell you, it absolute, it makes no sense, especially if, uh, and I could prove it, tapping all along your score to try to get a, a, a result. Yeah, you're gonna you gonna look. It broke. Beautiful. Solder it. Bring it home. Why is it? Why? Why do I have cracks everywhere? That's why. Because you're tapping too much. Use the new running tools I have. You know, tap in the beginning. Take do relief cuts. Do the proper scores you need to do. You know, keep your cut straight up, perpendicular, well oiled. You gotta use oil. If someone says that you don't have to use oil, you got, look. There's no debate. You have to use oil to cut. And I, I, you can cut without oil. Yes, you can. But if you want to cut su successfully, put a lubricant down. All right. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to argue that. It's, it is. It is what it is. All right. Uh, other helpful hints for cutting glass like an expert. Well, we all want to cut like an expert. Experience is important to becoming an expert glass cutter. I never read this. Holding the cutter just so, applying the just the right amount of pressure, making a firm stroke on the cut, all these fine points are the end result prep. <laughs> You're going to get the, uh, what is that badge? The expert of ba badge. <laughs> Come to my Facebook group, Red Devil. I got a badge for you. Yeah. Never drop your glass cutter or let its wheel strike any sharp, hard object. Lest its edge becomes nicked. Uh, that's just common sense. Skips in a cut are usually caused by nicks, and the only solution is to buy a new cutter. Yeah, okay. The best way to store your cutter is to place in a can or jar containing a half and half mixture of kerosene and household lubricating oil. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, you could. I'll go half and half with the lubricating oil. It gets a little slippery. And uh, regular three-in-one oil, I think it has an evaporation rate as much as quick as kerosene or as quick as mineral spirits. But they're right. Leave it, leave it. Take your cutter when you're done. Don't leave it on the bench. Put it in the in your oil container. And uh, just so you know, it's not gonna get uh, rusty or what have you. You know, it, it's, it's good practice. Just put it back in the oil. After you become an expert glass cutter, you'll probably say, Nothing to it. Good luck. <laughs> I I love. I mean, again, this is like this is an advertisement type of pamphlet, and they they're you know color colorful candor or whatever. I love it. It's, it that's the fifties and sixties for you. All right, now you gotta you have a a circle sweep glass cut, cutting circles of glass core calls for a special design Red Devil circle cutter. All right, so a metal base with rubber mat. What? It's not plastic? Which prevents slipping. The revolving cutter arm is marked at 16th inch graduation so you can quickly set the cutter to the size of the circle required. Cut circles from 2 inch to 24 Larger sizes are also. Uh, each cutter has provisions for easy replacement of the wheel. Wheel. 
two refill wheels are included with the number 263 circle cutter. Cuts accurate circles from either plain or plate glass. From either plain. Okay, so maybe they're just saying accurate circles from all kinds of glass. I guess you can use it on a you know opalescent glass too. But you know the language is a little awkward, but it, that's fine. All right, let's move on. 14. I've never used the circle cutter. Believe that one. Never had to. Let's see. The circle cutter. See now that. That don't look like plain glass to me. That looks like Kokomo 111. Alright. The Red Devil number 263. Same as regular cutter, but does not overlap at end of circle. Plain glass under the side to impress circle right after cutting so etch line won't get cold. That's not I think somebody else wrote this page. Come on, who did it? Whole glass. Okay, they, I think I'm tr they're trying to say there are ways to cut circles, and uh, one of the good ways is after you cut the circle, you, you flip it over, the glass over, kind of push down along the score just to get it to break right. Uh, that's that's more of a you know showstopper trick. Uh, the best way to cut a circle is you know, at your 12, 6, 9, and 3. You look at a clock. At 12, 6, 9, and 3, you want to cut relief cuts. Now, you don't want to cut a relief cut that... I'm, I'm planning on doing a video about this. You don't want a relief cut that runs off the circle, you know, following the circle line. You don't want that. Let me use my, my pen. straight on the camera here. Alright, here we go. Okay. So your relief cut, say you have a relief cut at 3 o'clock. You don't want your relief cut to follow the line and go like that. That's the biggest mistake people make. Uh, the reason why, though it will work, it's going to give you a little pointed edge right where your score meets the circle. It's something you're going to have to deal with later, chip it off, grind it, but um, basically, that relief that that's going to cause an issue. So, the relief cut I speak of is going right at three o'clock, twelve, six, and nine. Don't go right to the score. Go very close. I mean, I'm talking sixteenth of an inch. Go straight off, straight out at a ninety. Do it on all four corner sides, twelve, six, nine. And then. You want to go ahead and remove this excess glass on the side. You just cut a straight line, snap that off, get in next to this glass, take your pliers, bend it down, and what's going to happen is when it when the score starts running, it's going to get to that relief cut and snap off. You're going to have a perfect circle and and the actual score may continue past this relief cut so if it does continue without that relief cut breaking you, you give it a little here's what I'm gonna say yeah you could tap it there just tap it this thing will fall this glass will fall off All right so you give it a little tap or take the the grouser you, you folks use uh, modern day cutters with the handicap no grouser no wind whatever you know, grab your pliers, try to break that relief score if it's not going to break on its own. All right, so, and then once you get that off, you, you're going to have left is part of this initial score from that circle. All right, then you grab that piece, that glass that now is missing this, or if it's broken, you may not have re had it removed down here. Uh, you, you can, it could probably be removed there too and have a continuous score underneath here too. 
But th this is each one. You probably cut ten cut ten circles, and each one will, will will act differently. My point is that this glass is off or on. Do the same thing. Remove glass here. Get in. Just keep that that run going. This this relief cut. What it's doing, it's going to allow you to re relieve this glass, because even though it's an outside curve, I'm getting off the page. Even though it's an outside curve, if you try to break the glass in one shot, either from the top or pushing from underneath, you're going to get some edging on that curve. That's going to—it's those little fine shards that pop out. It's also going to weaken that, that circle. It's going to cause issues. So you want to take that outside relief off. And as, as you do have this removed, you're going to find it, it's a beautiful uh, cut. And being you had that relief cut and this relief cut, when you snap that, the, the reason why this breaks easier, because if this is one big piece of glass and you try to snap it down, you're putting pressure all along that score. When you do the relief cut, glass will bend before it breaks. If you want a better example of that, cut a long strip of glass, hold it out right, and kind of give it, you'll see it bends. When, it, when it's in one piece, uh, the relief cut, that little bit of glass right there, is actually bending enough to relieve relieve the pressure on that desired score which in this case is a circle. I, I plan on doing a, a whole video on that but um, to be announced. That's what's going on. So let's see. Uh, uh, sorry, getting off subject. It's the book, right? It's the book. And there's only a few pages. Yeah. So right, cutting etch line won't get cold. Yeah. The same thing mentioned. Don't let you know break it and score. The, if you use a good lubricant, the uh, chances of a score getting cold is less. So use your lubricant. Right. Last ceramic circle must be cut away to free circle. Oh look, there you go. You see the relief cuts? I, I didn't realize they did that in this book. I honestly I didn't. See they're showing these relief cuts. So they're not they're not winged out. So there you go. I honestly did not see this. Um, glass ceramic circle must be cut away to free circle. Make the straight lines with regular red devil cutter from circle to edge, then break away from circle. There you go. There's proof. That's how you cut a circle. Alright. That's good advice. Nice circle. Alright. Page 17. Now this is showing uh, a couple more tools that these are the, the flat breaker pliers, uh, glass pliers. They got a, a flat edge and a kind of an angled edge on the top. Uh, they're good for using on, on heavier glass, quarter inch, half inch. It's, save your fingers. What do we got here? A devil. Oh. How could that be? I wasn't born, born yet. It's 1952. Red devil circle. Oh, I thought they, it said red devil glass cutting machine. <laughs> My bad. Uh, well they, they got a machine for it. That's interesting. You got to cut a lot of circles. Right, and we got Red Devil gouge glass cutter. I have no idea. What is that? Like a straight edge guide? Yeah. Good work. Yeah, I've seen uh, some Asian fellow just you know, he's making stained glass on YouTube. I was quite impressed with his jiglet, jig setup. He had a, a straight, you know, like a, a straight edge on his bench top, and he used a sort of a similar jig, you know, with like a T-square on it, 
And what he did is he adjusted that, he adjusted the, the cutting wheel back and forth to how wide he wanted his strips. And just by pressing down, let's see, get this pencil again. Just by pre pressing down on the top of where the wheel is and pulling the whole jig toward him, he cut successful strips. I, I, I saw that, I was, I was impressed. So, uh, if, if you're watching my video, Asian dude cutting glass, you, you did good. All right. We have uh, tools for professional work with glass. All right, you got the the double cup holder. These things, these things, they they just work. They're not like, no, you can't cut a circle like Spider Man. Uh, back, you can't do that. But they work really good for transporting heavy pieces of glass, even on small pieces of glass. You get a, the, the, what a neoprene, the single cup with a handle on it. Just has a single level. You snap it over. If you, you gotta, you know, pick pull glass up in a setting, or you gotta shim it. You, you don't want to chip the glass in the end. Put the put the cup holder on it and, and do what you gotta do. Uh, glass cutting board. Huh. I've never seen. Oh, you know what that is? That that you stand that up. You put the glass on it. You kind of just scribe it going up and down. I guess if you got a ten foot sheet of quarter inch glass you just pulled off the truck with that just kind of put it in there and you cut it in half make it five foot yeah I don't know Red Devil made that but they do they did and what is this glass drill huh oh I see it's just like a pyramid top it could be diamond coated, it could be just, you know, carbide, I have no idea. Uh, haven't had to use glass drills much, other than you know, my mom making a clock saying, Gary, can you cut this? You cut this? Okay, mom. So I'll, I'll get, you know, cutter, I use a, a tile, a hole cutter, basically it looks like an arrow point has carbide or diamond uh, chips and gray using a little uh, well of water you could do that with uh, a silly putty make a circle and just keep the water in there the trick is you gotta have water you gotta keep that glass and the drill bit cool it gets hot it's gonna expand the glass and you know, have undesired uh, results they're slow. They have core drills. You know, they like look like a a keyhole cutter. That's got diamond coats all along. The same thing. Uh, use it in a, a, a like a drill press for cutting holes in glass. Uh, uh, during the the transition days, when our economy went in the toilet, uh, I won't mention politics or who, but. It happened. It, it shut me down. I had to become a glazer. I already knew how to cut glass, so they hired me on the spot, and I did a lot of, you know, the laminated glass, quarter-inch plate, tempered. I, I worked at everything. I was a, I was a glass doctor from Wilmington, North Carolina, to uh, Moorhead City, New Bern, and Points West. Uh, there's a, a lot. Similar, but many differences between stained glass studio and a, a glazing shop. I won't call it a studio. But glass drills, yeah, we use them a lot. We use the core drills and the drill presses. We use um, one typical, we had a few of these double suction cups for bigger jobs, but for the most part, we use a single, was it a 10 inch cup, 8 inch cup? That, that had a 175 pound uh, weight. You could hang from it. As long as the glass didn't break. Right. A little bit of my blazing background. I right hear they're showing more tools. Uh, 
they got points. These these are put in a gun. You know that, that shoot in and plays his hammer. Yeah, I guess that's the shoot the pins in. Oh no, this is, this is the point driver. That's the gun. You load the points in and you put it flat on the you know your stained glass and all glass and just like a staple gun you can shoot the point in. Uh, there's a quick way of doing it. I've got other points here. These are not the same. These are called these are push points. Uh, what you want to do is you take the point and uh, glazing knife is put here a little you know one inch putty knife and you push here and you kind of wiggle it in you know going straight in maybe on a slight angle of where the stained glass meets the wood and that's just it's not meant to hold it in place permanently it's just to put it there so when you caulk it you know use your glass putty you know your glazing putty and once the glazing putty sets that's just, that's what's going to hold the glass in. This is just to hold it in there so it's not falling out on you. That's how that's used. And the glazing points, or these diamonds, you'll see a lot of older windows. That's, a lot of them use that. They shoot them right in. Yeah, there's no real trick of getting them out. You just gotta. I use just a you know glazing knife and catch it on the edge. And twist them out, and spin them out. Right. Let's see what else we got. Handy tools. Oh yeah, this right here. This is the this is the the putty knife. Similar to this. Uh, you want the one with the curved blade. It'll it'll get. It, it's it's good for putting glazing putty on. If you're gonna, they they call it sash putty. You know, face putty, you, you bevel out from the glass out to the edge of the wood. But it's also good for pushing the push pins in because it's got a curved edge. You don't have to lay flat to the stained glass. You can come in, you know, at a slight angle. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Lucite scraper. Razor blade scraper. Huh. Well, I guess, you know, scraping, a lot of scraping going on, but uh, lo Lucite, there's, there's a tool with a hook on it, it looks like a, all it is is a scribing blade, and for, for Lucite, acrylic, polycarbonate, you know, the protection glazing, polycarbonate's a little bit stronger, uh, but, you know, any kind of plexiglass, loose side acrylic you scribe it a few times with this tool it literally has a I have it here I just don't know where it has a very sharp point to it very sharp point and you pull it and you relieve you know, remove a couple layers of uh, the material and that allows you to you know snap it just put it to the edge of the bench and snap it down uh, you can cut it with a jigsaw and it gets messy. You got straight cuts. Use that use the cutter. I have it somewhere. Where's this chisel? Yeah. There's some neat old tools. That's it is still working. And what do we got here? Wood scraper. Oh alright, paint scrapers. What is that? Send paper holder. Okay. Interesting. And then we have carbide scraper. It's huh. interesting. And what is 22? What is that contraption then? Is that a, a drill press? Paint mixer? Yeah, the paint mixer. Or paint conditioner. Buy paint from dealers who have these 
I never knew Red Devil sold this stuff. Now they're trying to coin in on the market. And they even have a paintbrush. Huh. Okay. I bet you it works good. Red Devil's actually very well made stuff. And that's it. I guess they had to do a filler page. Things to know. And if that book wasn't enough for you, they have other how-to books. How to fix... I can't even read that. And I broken... Well, and then from Irvington, New Jersey, you will see a local Red Devil hardware dealer, or write them directly. Actually, I believe they're still in business. Um, again, this is a how to how to cut glass. It, it's very. Uh, informative and in 1952 you know, glass cutting is going around a lot longer than that um, but I, I just happened to stumble across this this book I had you know laying in the pile of old stuff and uh, just wanted to share uh, that's it for this video if you do like it you know that you know that the drill uh, thumbs up, like this, that. I appreciate any uh, comments you have. If you have anything to add or question, I, I'm, I'll be more than happy to uh, help you out. And uh, you know, if you do subscribe, you'll make sure. I mean, you'll get an up. You'll see a little thing pop down from your phone. Hey, Gary's got a new video. Check it out. If you don't want to miss anything, hit the subscribe button. All right. You have a good day.